Anthony, the concept of a multiverse, multiple universes, is perhaps one of the most exciting, unbelievable ideas in all of science. If it's true, what does it mean? I think it means a lot of things, and, and I actually find it really liberating. And when I first started studying cosmology, it, the standard model of cosmology hadn't really been put together. The, the basic Big Bang idea that the universe evolved from a hot, dense state was in place. Uh, but it really was during my lifetime as a graduate student, actually, that it, it really was nailed into place, that we understand the universe's evolution in the last 14 billion years quite well. And we understand it to the degree that it's become familiar and, and started to me to feel a little bit small. <laughs> so when I started to, to hear these ideas about other universes, other regions like our universe, but maybe different and so on, at first it's a little scary and weird and mind-boggling, but then it becomes very liberating, as I said, in the same sense that it must have been liberating to find out that other stars had planets or, or could have planets or that other those weird little blobs in the sky were actually other galaxies just the same size as ours. It's a tremendous widening of your intellectual horizons. And it's not just bigger, but it's so much more diverse. And that's the more exciting thing, I think, about the multiverse. And it, it changes the way you think about almost every question in cosmology and in fundamental physics in a lot of ways. Yeah, so let's see what we got here. We have the universe that we see, which looks like 14, approximately 13.7 billion light years, but we know it's bigger than that since that's the way it was, so it's expanded right. since then. So we have this universe that we can see, which is limited by the what we can see, the speed of light, the amount of time that it's, it's taken. Now, that's right. there probably is stuff beyond that that we can see. Yes. Now, are you calling that another universe, or that's sort of part of our universe? You could. So, so in, in the most limited sense, a multiverse would just be more regions just like ours, but we only see, you know, some small fraction of the rest, the whole universe, which is just okay. like ours, more copies of the same. Right. And that's almost certainly true in the sense that the most widely accepted understanding of the, the very early universe, the theory of inflation, uh, says that the universe expanded very quickly early on. And it's very unlikely that it would expand just large enough to so, give us the universe we see, right. but no more and no less. Yeah, but understand, the universe we see has at least 100 billion galaxies, some say up to 400 billion galaxies, and each of those might have 100 billion stars. I mean, it's unbelievably huge what we see, That's right. but almost certainly beyond that. Almost but, certain. but when you say multi-universes, you're talking about something even beyond that. That's right, and, and the way you would cook up multiverses, if, if you were just imagining multiverses and thinking, well, let's uh, assume that all kinds of other different universes exist with other properties, you actually wouldn't come up with something that's quite as neat as what nature seems to have come up with through this mechanism that's called eternal inflation and through this idea that's called the string theory landscape. Uh -huh. So maybe we should talk a little bit about eternal inflation. This is the idea that inflation, which made the universe very big and very uniform early on, so we think, didn't just make us, but it made some more. And so you have to ask, how much more did it make? And it turns out that the answer is probably infinitely more, in the sense that inflation, once you get it going, never stops. It only stops here and there, making some region that we call a universe that, that then evolves from that inflationary state to a hot, dense state, to a state that forms galaxies and so on. But elsewhere it goes on and spawns more of those things. And we could call these bubble or pocket universes. Now, these are really neat things because it from the standpoint of the inflating space, there's a sea of inflating space that these are forming in. They look like things that start out basically at a point and then expand at the speed of light. So they look like finite objects expanding at the speed of light. But when you go inside one, from the reference point of someone who's inside looking at it, it looks like an infinite homogeneous mm -hmm. sure, uniform sure, universe. Sure. So this, uh, this is one of the most mind-boggling things that you can create right here a universe that at any time is finite, and yet inside it's infinite. Right? <laughs> so this is something that I never would have you know, come up with. I would have thought, that's crazy. You could never create an infinite universe out of a finite seed, right. and yet inflation is smart enough to have figured out how to do this. But this led to a, an unfortunate aspect that it seemed that because your universe is infinite, you go as far as you want, and you're never going to get out of it. You're never going to see any of these other bubble universes that you think exist, but seemingly you can't observe. One exciting thing that, that's only come to light recently is that that may actually not be the case. It may be that because these bubbles actually collide with each other, that other universes could be running into our universe all the time, and they could happen. It could happen uh, 
that they come into our observable horizon now, or it could have happened early on and we just haven't seen them yet, uh, and they could actually affect, say, the cosmic microwave background radiation and be detectable. So this is, so the, the richness with which the, the multiverse seems to have come into to being spans these, these beautifully exciting things from creating an infinite universe from a finite seed to creating an infinite universe that nonetheless you can see out of and see other infinite universes that are interacting with it that may have totally different properties. So, so what, what does this tell us about, about the totality of, of reality? I mean, it's, you almost can't grasp it anymore. It, you have to take steps. So, so the, the, the first step, I think, from our observable universe, which we understand fairly well now after you know, enormous labor by cosmologists and by uh, astronomers putting together this picture, it's been a tremendous success. The, the step beyond that, if there is one, is, I think, this to understand what the structure of one of these inflationary multiverses is. And the basic structure of it in the simplest model is that there are lots of other bubbles that are pretty much like ours. But then, as I said, there's this other set of ideas, which I'm sure uh, you've, you've heard about, the string theory landscape, that endows this infinite set of bubbles with an enormous diversity of properties that occur within those, those bubbles. What's fascinating is, is that you have two ideas which on its sur their surface don't relate. They come from totally different mechanisms. E eternal inflation on the one hand, chaotic inflation, and on the other hand, string theory. Both of which, I, sh I should add, are, are unintended side effects yeah. of theories that were devised for a different purpose. For a different purpose. And now suddenly there seemed to be a way that one can populate the other and they could work together in a rock away. That still doesn't prove either are correct, certainly not both. That's right. But I, it, I would say that if the string landscape is correct, then eternal inflation is, has to exist. Mm -hmm. one, that, that does entail the other. Eternal inflation does not entail the string theory landscape, mm -hmm. but it does happen the other way. Okay, so, and, and each of these would be capriciously or randomly chosen or some other mechanism, but they don't have to have the same values at, at all, right? No, they would not. Yeah. So, so th there, would be, there would be an inherent randomness to what bubble forms where and what properties it has. The universe right now seems to have that. The, the presence of us here in our galaxy is due to a quantum fluctuation that happened in the inflationary phase of the universe that said, there's going to be a little bit of extra density right here that formed a seed for gravitational, uh, for gravity to act to make that little fluctuation bigger and bigger, eventually forming our galaxy and then eventually us. So we're here and not uh, a, a mega parsec away <laughs> or, or some huge distance away, or, and there's not empty space right here because of a purely random quantum mechanical event 15, 14 billion years ago. And so at the end of the day, how does that make you feel when, 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 when you deal with this, when you deal with this day in and day out, that's your job. Like a guy who drives a truck thinks about the road. When you drive your truck, you're thinking about a multiverse. That's right. It's great. I, as I said, it's, I find one of the most exciting things to be this confrontation with, almost with paradox or, or with, the, with the thing that you, you just can't quite believe. And, and this multiverse question is one of those things, especially in connection with what does it mean? So, so there's this question that's been lying around for a long time. Why is, is, does the universe seem so hospitable to life? It, it seems like uh, if you change lots of the fundamental parameters, the, the strength of the electric uh, interaction, the strength of gravity, just a little bit, life as we know it can't happen. Right? So, so how did we get so lucky? It could have just been the universe rolled the dice and we landed 12 sixes in a row, and here we are. More like a million sixes in a row. <laughs> could be. Uh, that seems hard to swallow, right? So, so you look for all other explanations. It could be that uh, life forms naturally in any sort of universe that there might be. That would be pretty exciting, right? That would mean that, at least in theory, there are wildly different life forms, completely different from us based on completely different physics that nonetheless exist and can right. contemplate the world and think how great it is. So that's another explanation. It could be that there was some element of design, you know, there could be some supernatural agent that created the universe, or people travel back in time to create the oh, universe, or create right. universes in the lab, and so on, but designed so that they were hospitable. That's another option. Or it could be that there's this multiverse, and that it's hugely diverse, and we just live in the places where we can live. And what I love about this question is that it's hard to think of too many more really categorically different 
things that you can, ways that you can look at it. Of course, you can subdivide them in all kinds of ways. But no matter which one you look at, it's pretty interesting, <laughs> yeah, right? right. So, so you're sort of forced that you can't ignore this question because every answer you can come up with is a really exciting one. And it seems like those answers are universally exhaustive. In other words, every possibility that can exist, you have in one category. You may not know what it is, you may not know yeah. what the subcategory is, but you know what the big category is. I think that's right. And, and you know, maybe there's another explanation out there, but that would also be super interesting, yeah, right? Yeah, and right, we haven't right. even thought of it. Right. Yeah. So I, I love contemplating these sorts of things. And, and physics has a history of them. I find them very exciting the, the, because it's, it's part of the joy of doing physics when you really take something that you can't quite believe and then understand, I have to believe it, but I can't believe it, but I have to believe it. And then you make that leap and you do. And this happened throughout physics and it, everybody gets the chance to, to recreate that through learning physics for the first time, for really grappling with quantum mechanics and what it means, which you, you never finish mm -hmm. doing that, most people who, who think about it, and w with really grappling with cosmology and this question of multiple universes and did it all begin? This is another interesting question. Uh, where the either answer is hard to believe. Either the universe started and then there, were, there was nothing and then there was suddenly something or there wasn't nothing, that's even more confusing, <laughs> or it didn't start, right? So what does that mean if it goes eternally back into the past? And again, all the answers are interesting. So it makes it so fun to think about.